All right, Spirit Airlines, here we go. It's just a little Friday evening. Um, I thought that I would, not I thought, I felt like I should make a Spirit Airlines uh, video uh, really quick, uh, kind of like kind of thrown together, don't even have like full lipstick on or anything, which y'all know that's a big deal. But I had information that I wanted to share. Spirit Airlines is growing. They sent out a bunch of video interviews earlier today. So today is February 12th, uh, 2021. And um, I was like, oh my gosh, I, I got to do a video. And there's a couple reasons why. One is I'm a really big fan of Spirit Airlines. I think that they are an awesome opportunity. I think they're a fantastic airline to fly for, to become a flight attendant for. I think that this is a really, really cool opportunity if you are an aspiring flight attendant because they are a major airline. They are profitable. They are just a really good airline company to work for and represent. But on the flip side, they kind of don't have the best reputation um, out there in in the world with the civilians. Uh, part of that is because they, when they came to the market, they brought a brand new business plan and no one had ever bought airfare the way that they were selling it. And so they, it took them some time to edu educate their consumer into what they were trying to do. So um, we were not used to to, as consumers, we were not used to paying um, a la carte pricing, which is what Spirit does. Okay, so let's get into that. So I could just talk all about them. In fact, I'm going to, but let's get to the nitty gritty. So in this video, we're going to talk about the branding, what you need to know about the application, tips for your resume specific to Spirit, what to expect, like I said, through the application process. And then we're also going to talk about the video interview, which is the first, uh, well, it's technically the third step, but it's like the first real step in the interview process. Okay, diving in. So Spirit Airlines is headquartered um, in, I've got my notes, uh, are, is headquartered in Fort Lauderdale. They are planning on doubling their fleet, which means doubling the number of airplanes that they have, which means massive growth, massive um, growth opportunity for you professionally. It means moving off reserves sooner. It means getting the base that you want sooner. It means so many exciting things. So go ahead and get in and do it. So this is not the same opportunity as we've seen with some other airlines where they have recalled furloughs and they had a hundred people, hundreds of people that didn't come back or they're getting flying from their mainline partner who is actually cutting and we don't know what's gonna happen in the future if as they expand, are they gonna take it back? This is different. Spirit is growing, okay? So they are not a regional, they are considered an ultra low cost carrier. Uh, that's their qualification and they are a major, they're also considered a major airline because of the amount of money that they make in a year, which is how um, airlines are categorized as majors or not. Um, so ultra low cost carrier though, that's what you need to know. If you're taking notes, jot it down. Um, other ultra low cost carriers, Frontier, Allegiant are ultra low cost carriers. We've got um, Avalo, Avalon, Av Av Avalo, the new, it was Extra Airways is rebranding out on the West Coast. They're going to be ultra low cost carrier. We've got Airbon, I believe is going to be an ultra low cost carrier. Um, so these are some of the, so we're getting, we're seeing a lot more movement into this industry. This is, or this section of um, aviation. This is a little bit different than just a low cost carrier, which would be your JetBlue and your Southwest, which remember Southwest brought the low cost carrier carrier to the world and uh, they kind of disrupted the market with that. So now we see again Spirit and the ultra low cost carrier disrupting again and re-educating people because um, y'all know some people was flipping out when Southwest and had no first class, right? Or meals. Good Lord, they probably, oh, but okay, let's get back to Spirit. So Spirit, Here's the thing. So they're growing. They're hiring for growth. That is something that is important to you for uh, career-wise for longevity reasons, okay? Um, their bases, this is where they have crew bases. And I'm going to read it because I always seem to forget one if I don't read the list. Um, they have a base in Atlantic City. So Atlantic City, Dallas, Detroit, Fort Lauderdale, Las Vegas, Las Vegas, um, Orlando, and... Chicago. So Atlantic City, Dallas, Dallas, Fort Worth, Detroit, Fort Lauderdale, Las Vegas, Orlando, and uh, Chicago 
O'Hare, Chicago O'Hare. There's, that's where their bases are. They are not hiring for any one specific base. They will put you where they need you. With this amount of growth, though, it is pretty good chances that you would either get your base that you request or that you would get to transfer to your base pretty soon because you're going to have so much growth behind you. So those are the bases you have to be willing to relocate to any of the crew of bases. Um, they're, they do allow commuters, but again, they're wanting you to be willing to, to uh, relocate to your crew base. Um, here's some things that I wanted to talk about as far as spirit branding goes. So these are things that, again, if you're taking notes or if you're making mental notes about um, how spirit talks about themselves, y'all know how important it is to know the brand of the airline that you're applying with and interviewing with because there are people who are really, really smart, very talented, and paid well to come up with the specific words that are used on the website when it comes to branding. No one does anything willy-nilly. So these people pick the specific word. What they call their passengers is specific. The, the way that they do their core values, their slogan, all of this is very, very thought out. And somebody put a lot of work, creativity, and effort into it. So for you to be familiar with it and for you to embrace it and make it your own in some ways is very complimentary to the people who worked really hard. Um, and it also just shows that you actually took the time to learn about the airline and that you didn't just apply to every flight attendant position that you got and just said, whoever, you know, if you like it, then you should put a ring on it. And it doesn't matter who you are, I'm going to say yes. So that's part of the reason that we learn about branding. Spirit branding. Um, also, here's a little plug. Um, if you want more information about the branding for every airline, please check out the Flight Attendant Career Hub. Um, there's a link down below where you can sign up for that and learn more. Okay, so let's continue on. Um, we Their slogan is delivering the best value in the sky. Um, and they want to be the most successful airline on earth. So I read it again because these words are so specific. So they don't say like the the biggest airline in the world. No, they want to be the most successful airline on earth. Deliver the best value. Value is a big one. Ultra low cost carrier, not surprising. Um, in the sky and be the most successful airline on earth. Know that. You don't need to memorize it and regurgitate it. You just need to absorb it into your heart and just know it okay um next they are relaxed they are friendly they are fun and they are playful so we see friendly a lot every airline wants friendly people um we see fun actually more often than not at this point we don't see with everyone but we see fun but playful and relaxed are new, are specific to, to spirit. And I think that it really does show a lot about their culture. I think that those words are probably two words that really define a lot about what spirit's trying to do, relaxed and playful. Um, you can tell by their ads, by their bear fare, even by some of their ads that are a little cheeky, a little irreverent, get them in, in trouble a little bit. So that's what, what they would say is playful, all right? Um, core values. Safety, of course. Service, of course. And then two special ones, savvy and style. So savvy is being forward thinking. Style is uh, just putting their own uh, spin on things, kind of like their own flavor to make their passengers smile and make their passengers happy. So those are the core values. Safety, service, savvy, and style. Um, what's another reason that this is important? This is important for your cover letter and resume. We love to use uh, buzzwords or core values in your resume and cover letter because for one thing, it helps your, uh, your resume as it goes through the computer system because you better believe that some of these very special words are going to be what, they are, what spirit is looking for. And then it also will help if, you, if, you, if your resume does make it to a person, um, it just shows some care and that you are already a good match because you made your resume match. Um, let's talk about training now. So now we're going to move into training. We're going to move out of branding, and now we're going to talk more about the nitty-gritty about what you can expect lifestyle-wise um, at Spirit. Training is four weeks long. So traditionally, or um, in, in the history of Spirit, they've done all of their training in Fort Lauderdale, uh, which is where they're headquartered in. But they are actually kind of changing it up. I'm curious to see how this is going to play out. But they're going to be holding initial training in Fort Lauderdale 
also in Las Vegas, also in Lor- in Orlando. So Orlando, Las Vegas, and Fort Lauderdale. So I noticed a couple months ago they were actually hiring in-flight instructors for all three of those areas, all three of those bases, which makes sense um, because I also read on the Facebooks, uh, I also heard through the, through the grapevine that they are going to be moving training around from place to place. So I don't know if this is for social distancing reasons. So maybe they could, I mean, they could have three training classes going at once without without overfilling their training rooms. I'm thinking that could maybe be a really smart reason to do it, or maybe it's just more cost effective to move it around. So I don't know why, but um, that's something to just kind of be prepared for. It, your training could be in one of those three places. Um, also training is four weeks long and unpaid, but they will provide what's called a care card, which I'm imagining is like a chow, chow card. I think that's what Southwest calls them or like a food card. Okay. Um, and then, so that's a little bit about training. They do pay for your accommodations like, uh, like we expect, but the training is not paid. Now let's talk about our application. So here's how you apply. <laughs> you go to the website, obviously, and um, they're currently accepting applications as of this recording. I don't imagine that that will uh, stop or slow down, or if it does, it would be temporarily throughout the rest of the year. Again, they're growing like crazy. So they're gonna need flight attendants. Um, you must be 21 years old to apply. You must be at least five feet tall. There's no max um, height. They have the larger planes, not the regional jet, so there's no max height. Uh, you must have a passport. Um, you don't necessarily have to have it at the moment of your application, but you have to have it for your interview, and the video interview is coming pretty quick. So um, I would definitely suggest that you get your passport book, and it's not the card, it's the book, so you need it. Um, Another thing that I wanted to point out as far as the requirements is, of course, you have to speak English because that's the language of aviation, but they have in their job description that speaking Spanish is a plus. So please make sure that that's in your resume if you speak Spanish. Thank you. Uh, the starting pay, $21.04 per flight hour. They are unionized and a member of the AFA, which means more than likely, I haven't done this yet. I guess I could have, but I'm pretty sure that if you Google Spirit Airlines Collective Bargaining Agreement, then you should be able to find their, their contract. If you're interested in reading more uh, legal jargon about uh, the work rules and the, <laughs> the, the negotiated contract between the AFA and Spirit Airlines. When you apply, so here's where it gets a little bit different. So you're going to fill out your application just like normal, regular kind of uh, nothing unexpected in the application, but it says on the application, it says on the job listing, it says everywhere that you will immediately get an assessment. And if you don't get it, then it might be in your spam folder and you need to go and hunt the thing down because you got to fill it out for your application to be complete. So it's a Gallup assessment. So you maybe will see this, you know, oh, Gallup assessment, like floating around. That's what it is. It's a personality test. So <sighs> this always stresses people out. First question, do you have the personality to be a flight attendant? I mean, you do, right? Because this is why you're trying, because you know that you would be really good at being a flight attendant. Okay, so you have a personality that will make you a good flight attendant. So there's no reason to stress about a personality test, testing you to see if you have the personality of a flight attendant when you have the personality of a flight attendant, correct? Um, things, though, to keep in mind, um, we don't want to be middle of the road. We don't want to be like wishy-washy. We don't want to be like willy-nilly. We don't care. You really do want to kind of have some strong feelings, yes or no, agree or disagree, mostly agree or mostly disagree. We don't really want any like middle stuff, okay? Let's have some, let's have some, what is it like chutzpah? Is that like Yiddish for like, I don't know. I hope I didn't just say a bad word. I apologize if I did. But you want to have, you know, like some guts or whatever. Uh, you want to have some conviction. That's probably the most appropriate word about things. So go with your gut, answer truthfully, answer consistently. Um, I have a whole video on assessments, but really quickly, make sure though, since this is a personality test, that you are feeling your best self. You are feeling like you are in your best personality when you go to take the test. So what do we need to make sure that we do? We halt before we take the assessment, which is make sure you're not hungry, angry, lonely, or tired. If your tank in 
angry, hungry, angry, lonely, or tired tank is empty, let's get that filled up. Phone a friend, call your mama, eat a sandwich, feel yourself before you take your personality assessment, okay? Now, once that is done, then you will wait. And um, they have sent out some thanks but no thanks just based on those two things. So not everyone gets the video interview, but I'm going to believe that you will get the video interview. So let's talk about what to expect in the video interview. And I just looked at my notes and realized that I forgot my three tips for your resume to help you get to the video interview. So we're gonna say that really quick. Um, the name of the company is Spirit Airlines, not Spirit Air or Airways, it's Spirit Airlines. Make sure that's correct. They call their passengers guests. So this is similar to Alaska. It's not similar, it's exactly the same. Uh, this is what Alaska does too. They call their passengers guests. I always think that it's kind of special if you can change, um, at least in your objective, at least in your cover letter, uh, instead of saying like that you wanna care for passengers, say that you wanna care for guests if that company uses guests or customers if that company uses customers. Um, so I, this one, Spirit uses guests. So I wanna see guests in your guest, in your cover letter and in your resume. Um, another word that really stands out to me is friendly. So we wanna make sure that you're friendly, 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 friendly service to all your guests, friendly service to all your guests in your resume, okay? So, um, the, oh, I have four. The fourth thing is Spirit Airlines, um, they sell things on board. So because it is all a cart, you purchase a bear fare ticket, a uh, bear ticket. Uh, they have like a $9 club bear fare, I think. That might be Frontier. Correct me in the uh, comments, cause y'all will. Uh, <laughs> Just kidding. So, uh, they, but they do bare fare. So everything is a la carte. What that means is it's like when you go to a restaurant, um, sometimes you, if you go to McDonald's, you could either get a value meal and for like $7, you get your drink, your fries and your sandwich. Uh, and it's just all together, right? So that is uh, packaged up. That's how we normally buy airplane tickets. Uh, it comes with a seat, a drink, a snack and a carry on right? It, it comes with all that. Um, now, some airlines provide a checked bag. It's all different, but Spirit does a la carte. So instead of going and buying the whole value me meal at McDonald's, you can say, well, I've got my bottle of water in the car and I'm not really feeling French fries. So just give me the 99 cent hamburger. So instead of having to buy the value meal for $7, you could just buy the hamburger for 99 cents. And so that's what Spirit has done. That's what we mean when we say a la carte. Now, once you get on board as a passenger or as a guest of Spirit Airlines, um, there is opportunities for you to purchase extra things. Uh, well, there's actually opportunities to purchase things like all along, check your bag, carry your bag on, all of that stuff. But um, as far as the flight attendant is concerned, you will be selling drinks, uh, soft drinks as well as hard drinks, but soft drinks, hard drinks, snacks. Because part of Spirit's revenue model is selling things on board, um, one of the things that they are looking for this is not necessarily like a requirement, so don't freak out if you don't have it, but they are looking for sales experience, marketing and sales experience. So if you have that and you left it off your resume or you didn't highlight it because you were trying to go super customer service and safety focused, go ahead and pop that back in. When you worked at The Gap, yes, customer service, but you also marketed and sold blue jeans to people. So put that back in there so that we, so that you are as in your resume so that you are as fully qualified um, on paper as you are in life, in real life. Okay. All right. That was the resume tips. Now we're going to move on to the video interview. This is probably why y'all are actually here. The video interview, you, uh, they will send you an, an invitation. It has a deadline on it. It's highlighted. Know when your deadline is. Um, if you have applied to Spirit and you haven't heard back, um, make sure you're checking your spam every day. We don't want this stuff going to spam. Oh, I didn't see it. Oh, I didn't see it. Um, a lot of times the airlines are very accommodating to, oh, I didn't see the email and they will like reactivate your, your link or send it to you again. So if this happens, try email, try ask, but we don't want that to happen, especially since you want to be at the front of the list so you can get that seniority. So make sure you're checking your emails uh, for your video interview at least once a day. Now, when you get your video invitation, 
It is an on-demand video interview, just like we have been seeing uh, for the last six years or so from all the different airlines. It's on demand. You can do it anytime. They are asking you to have a sort of a plane background or a background that's free from distraction. Um, and then they're asking you to have nice lighting and they're asking you to speak up so that they can hear you. So um, if you can do it during the day, natural light is ideal. Um, I am currently not in natural light. This uh, video is not as good quality as some of my other YouTube videos when I've got the beautiful natural light pouring in. Um, I am outside, it's nighttime. I was, I've got some, some lights around me. I'm doing the best I can. The same, because I want to get this video out, but, and the same is true for you, okay? So do the best you can. Try not to sit in a dark cave. I actually moved out here because where I was sitting, I had plenty of light on my face, but it looked like I was in a cave from the back. So the fact that things are lit up behind me keeps me from looking like I'm in a weird cave. Um, that's something to think about if you're doing this at night. So maybe having some lights, some lamps like down on the floor near you, as well as behind your camera. Make sure there's no light right behind your head glaring like a halo effect because that also shadows your face and you can't be seen. Um, your background needs to be free from distraction. Kitchen cabinets, fine. Um, you know, a wall, fine. A white fence, fine. You don't have to like strip every picture off your house or like hang a sheet or whatever. Just make sure that there's not like a cat or like a big old pile of laundry or uh, like an offensive poster. Okay, <laughs> in your background, that's what they mean. And then speak up, that's self-explanatory. Speak slowly, even if you're nervous. That's the video interview, kind of like the requirements. Another piece of advice, do the video interview when you're ready to do the video interview. A good interview, a good video interview with good answers will get you to the next step. A quick video interview isn't going to give you extra bonus points. So we're trying to do a good video interview, not a quick video interview. If you have to wait till the next day or you have to get a good night's sleep or you have to just take a deep breath or you have to wash your hair or whatever, you have to have someone come get your cat, like <laughs> whatever it is, it's okay if you have to wait. Now we're not gonna wait past the deadline, but don't worry about like, I got home from work, I got the email, I'm so excited. Let me see what I can pull together. You know, you want to make sure you get one shot. So make sure you're you're prepared and feeling prepared to do your interview. Okay, here's what we can expect. You will see seven interview questions. You will receive seven video interview questions. The question will come up on the screen in words. You will be able to read it. You will be able to think about it for about three minutes and then you will be um, ready to record your answer. Now, seven is kind of a lot, I know. Uh, we're also seeing seven on the Sky West, but this interview is actually easier than Sky West because, um, Three of these questions are questions asking you if you are willing to agree to things that you already read about in the job description. So moving, relocating, um, unpaid training, um, you, tattoo guidelines, passport guidelines, um, piercings. They do allow uh, one earring in each ear for gentlemen, which is kind of cool. No visible tattoos though still. Uh, so those three questions are, are kind of like easy gimmies. Okay, now, even though we're an easy gimme, every time you have an opportunity to talk with someone or share something, that is always an opportunity you wanna take advantage of. So if they ask you a question like, do you have a passport? Don't just say yes. And then you, I mean, you would just say, yes, I am currently in possession of a US passport that is current. Give a little minute, give a little smile, say a full sentence, okay? Yes, I'm willing to abide by all uniform guidelines put forth by Spirit Airlines, including their visible tattoo policy and their jewelry policy. Give them a little bit more than just say yes and then a move on or a sure or a whatever that you're gonna say in your nerves. Give them a sentence, 
Give them a sentence, okay? Just one. You don't have to continue on. You don't have to tell them about all your tattoos or all your piercings or the reason that, like, your mom wouldn't let you get the piercing so you're super happy now. Like, we don't have to say anything like that. But let's give them a sentence, okay? You're also going to be presented with a star format question. So if you're not familiar with star format, I'm putting the link to the training down below um, so that you can check that out. But um, this is not a scary one. It's not one that you would not expect. It's one that you've probably been prepared to answer. So use Again, use the opportunity to shine. Um, so star format, tell me about a time when kind of question, okay? And then you're going to be asked three questions, two questions, because I could do math, two questions that are um, like, what do you, that's not seven though. I don't know. Hmm. I'm missing a question on my on my list here. So then you're going to be asked questions about um, one, two, three, four four, five, six. Okay, maybe it's just six questions. Y'all tell me down below. Then you're going to be asked, because um, I wrote them all down. Hmm. Uh, then you're going to be asked two questions that are tell me what you think questions. These questions are designed to find out why you think you're going to be a good flight attendant, why you think you're going to be a good spirit flight attendant, why you applied to spirit, why you want to be a flight attendant, what do you bring to the table that's going to make you a good spirit flight attendant. That is what these questions are designed to do. There is more information on these questions um, that are not my chicken scratchy notes that I'm trying to like get you the information from in the flight attendant career hub. If you're interested, you can go there to check out more information. But this is basically what I you need to prepare for for the video interview um again i've seen several people already posting on social media that they loved it that it was one of the easiest ones that they've done i would agree with that these questions even though there is a chunk of questions um several of them are just ones that you should have already been prepared to say yes i won't let my big old visible tattoo be visible. Uh, you know, So you already know about that and it kind of gets you warmed up. So it gets you warmed up because you're answering questions that are really low stress before you have to dive into your star format or your why, why I want to be the best flight attendant in the world. No, what would we say? Why you want to be the most successful flight attendant on earth, right? That's not the question. I just made that up. But I think maybe if Spirit's watching, they should say, why do you think you're going to be the most successful flight attendant on earth because it matches their their logo their motto slogan anyways okay so that is it that's the end um stay tuned if i we'll have to see what's next okay next step so we'll have to see because previously spirit airlines would do big uh like casting calls now they were invitation only but they would do like huge like hundreds of people Ain't nobody doing nothing with hundreds of people <laughs> right now. So we'll have to see. We'll have to see if they're going all virtual or if they're maybe doing like a different kind of face-to-face -face or I don't know. I mean, Sky West just has the video interview. So we'll see what's next. But stay tuned as I get more information. I'll definitely be updating, putting out more information. Um, if you're not already a member of the Flight Attendant Career Connection Facebook group, I would love for you to join. Um, information, of course, is in the, the, the description down below. Thank you for spending a little bit of time with me. I apologize for the weird lighting. Um, you probably heard my kids screaming in the background. They're playing PlayStation with their dad, which for some reason is super loud. But um, I hope you found this helpful. And um, Give me an update on how your video interview goes. I would love to know how you're feeling about it and how your journey is going. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.